Hello fellow comic book ones, this is Naman. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> Today I'm gonna talk about Spider-Man No Way Home. I wanna tell you my secret now. I first watched this movie with my son. After the movie, he asked me, Dad, would you have enjoyed this movie if uh, they try not to hit your nostalgia buttons? <laughs> and I said, No, absolutely not. I expect them to hit all my nostalgia buttons. More they hit it, more I would have enjoyed it. If they didn't hit, any of my nostalgia buttons, I will not have enjoyed it. Matter of fact, it probably will not have made any sense. Now, this is a tr trilogy started back in 2019 with uh, um, Tom Holland as a new Spider-Man. But there was a two Spider-Man characters. 2002, uh, Tobey Maguire started it. He had three movies out. And then 2012, Andrew Garfield started a new, they had a reboot of Spider-Man and he played Spider-Man and he had a, a set of villains, villains and girlfriend and whatnot. Tobey Maguire had his own set of uh, villains, girlfriends and whatnot. And if uh, we didn't have a prior knowledge of all those things, right, then this movie would not make any sense. Right? <laughs> uh, and matter of fact, if uh, we had some knowledge of uh, comic books since 1962, that's the Amazing Fantasy number 15, origin story of Spider-Man, Peter Parker, written by Stan Lee, drawn by Steve Ditko, that sold for recently at $3.6 million, near mint comic book, 9.6 out of 10. If you didn't have, if you had knowledge of that comic book and all the comic books following it, all the Spider-Man comics books following it to now, this movie will be immensely enjoyable. <laughs> you cannot take this movie by itself, and stand alone, and publish it hundred years from now, and you don't have any of the histories behind it. Just that, the movie will not make any sense. Of course, uh, that's a uh, better way of creating literature, standalone thing, better way of creating art, right, movie, whatever. But uh, this movie requires hitting my nostalgia buttons. It's, it requires hitting all those historical things since 1962, since 2002 movies, since 2012 movies. Talk about fan service. Right off the bat, MCU gives you Matt Murdock, the awesome attorney, right? Rescues Peter Parker slash Spider-Man from the legal problems. Then right in front of your eyes, <laughs> they give you Daredevil too. When that brick flew through that window, and he cut that brick before even Spider-Man can catch it. <laughs> There was a daredevil there, right there, right in front of your eyes. Amazing. <laughs> MCU just know how to give fan service. Unlike DC, MCU knows how to do it. They know that people love daredevil. People love Elektra, daredevil, Kingpin. So it looks like they're gonna bring daredevil into MCU. They even introduced Kingpin on Hawkeye TV series, so those guys are gonna come in. Oh, wow, yes. I wish DC can provide the same kind of fan service that MCU is providing. They know that Spider Man is their number one character in Marvel Universe. So MCU is gonna make Spider-Man 
number one character. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah, me too. Don't. For example, this nerdy 17, 18 year old teenager outsmarts Doctor Strange, who once was Grand Wizard, <laughs> who once was Brain Surgeon. He outsmarts Doctor Octopus, who once was renowned physicist. He outsmarts Lizard, who once was renowned geneticist. He outsmarts Electro, who once was top engineer, nerdy engineer. He outsmarts Goblin, who once was something of a scientist himself. <laughs> you know, I'm something of a scientist myself. One of the movie reviewer complained that this movie had a stupid premises. Peter Parker, Spider-Man is supposed to be genius, right? <laughs> and yet, he got dumb. They dumbed him down. When he and his friend got rejected by MIT interviewer, why didn't he approach that person again? Why didn't he try to plead his case? <laughs> First of all, high intellect does not mean common sense. Second of all, kid is 17, 18 year old kid. I remember being 17, 18 year old kid applying for colleges. I remember my kids applying for colleges. When they got those rejection letters, we didn't think about pleading our case. <laughs> we didn't think about asking for a second chance. We just went to another, apply for another college. <laughs> Maybe that's a smart way of doing it. Maybe that's what genius would do. Honestly, I think uh, if you're gonna, you know, be nitpicky about it, it's Doctor Strange who's who plays stupid. I mean, <laughs> the the brain surgeon. <laughs> really, that's the only solution he could come up with. He couldn't uh, just brainwash the interviewer. Instead, of he gonna have to brainwash the whole planet. <laughs> We go watch these movies with the suspension of our disbelief. It's superhero movies. I, I don't think it, it was a, it had a stupid premises. I think it had a lot of clever premises, honestly, and a lot of clever uh, part of the movie. For instance, when Dr. Octopus took over Spider-Man and still uh, Spider-Man's nanotechnology from his suit, right? <laughs> and the uh, uh, Spider-Man suit says, uh, new device found. <laughs> so immediately, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, pairs up with the new device, and he has a control over Dr. Octopus's arms. <laughs> I mean, that was clever. That was clever. Of course, uh, I don't know if for uh, us boomers, you know, I know a lot of boomer friends because I'm a boomer. Barely, barely. <laughs> so I know I try to help these people, you know, connect their Bluetooth device to their phone. Hey, my earphone doesn't work. You're supposed to pair them up. You're supposed to find a new device. <laughs> I thought that was so clever. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. I still tear up whenever I see that clip because I know what's going to happen to Uncle Ben. That message alone is why that first movie from 2002 is my favorite of all the Spider-Man movies. It, is, it was back then and it is now still, even after this great movie. I'm glad they are revisiting that message again in this movie. I'm sorry that we are losing Aunt May. <laughs> Wonderful performance by Melissa Tomei. I mean, she's the one who had to deliver the message, not Uncle Ben. Aunt May had to do it. Wonderful performance by William Defoe playing that evil guy, evil goblin that kills off Aunt May. This is where this Tom Holland Spider-Man is losing everything when he wanted 
it all, right? He wanted it all. <laughs> and this is when he, he, Tom Holland Spider-Man is, is start losing. And that's, uh, I mean, that's the Spider-Man that we have known for a long, long time. Uh, start from that 1962 comic book. I know Tom Holland Spider-Man had a pretty tough time too. I mean, he lost Iron Man, his mentor. Uh, they didn't explain how he lost his Uncle Ben and how he lost his parents. But I, I know he has a tough time, but in this, because how bright he was and how happy he was having his MJ and having his buddy and having back of, you know, being backed up by Avengers and Iron Man and his industry and all the Iron Man's tech. I mean, this Spider-Man had really easy compared to the other Spider-Mans, right? So, uh, seeing, you know, Tom Holland's Spider-Man losing Aunt May was pretty devastating. But, it, it made sense. It made sense that uh, uh, that he couldn't keep the, keep that up for too long. <laughs> Something had to go. Still, Tom Holland Spider Man is luckiest of all three Spider Man <laughs> because right after Aunt May goes away, he gets to meet two other Spider Men that has more experience than he does, that went through what he went through, that are able to comfort him and tell him that everything's going to be okay. <laughs> it was amazing. Crowd just burst out when uh, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man came through the portal and the, the pastor Spider-Man, <laughs> the, the uh, Toby McGuire Spider-Man when he came through, I just I, my heart burst because <laughs> Toby McGuire Spider-Man is my first Spider-Man, so <laughs> so that was amazing scene. I love it. I know that's fan service, but I, I, I loved it. And lucky, lucky Tom Holland Spider-Man, he got to meet two of his. Basically, older brothers that went through the same thing that he went through, and you know those two other Spider Men didn't have that kind of support, <laughs> did they? So, I mean, if you're gonna be tragic Spider Man, you might as well have the support of two other Spider Men. <laughs> of course, Tom Holland had to give everything up, still, and to. Everybody else forget him. So he will lose his MJ, his friend, Iron Man technology, all that. But, you know, that's the Spider-Man that we got fond of and we got to know. Again, from that 1962 comic book, that's the Spider-Man. You know what I realized? The first Spider-Man is Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man from that... 1962 comic book. Tom Holland Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man is just variant of Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, right? Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and Spider-Verse is variant of uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Universe. Spider <laughs> so, that said, I think um, I see that Tom Holland's gonna make another movie, which I would love. I think he's gonna meet the that hunter guy, and Venom. Maybe he will get the Venom and get the Venom suit. I think they're gonna make a movie for Andrew Garfield. His third movie, you know, close it up for him. I do wish they make movie with the, you know. Tobey Maguire, 
I think they could go two routes. Make something like an old man Rogan movie, like an old man old man Spider Man movie, <laughs> and then uh, another one would be if he gets in with the live action movie of a Spider Verse. So in Spider Verse, besides uh, Miles Morales, there's two other Spider Man, and one died immediately. I mean that could be Andrew Garfield, and the uh, Another one that came in at the later on was uh, basically mentor for my Morales, which could be Tobey Maguire, you know, belly and pizza belly and all that, you know, <laughs> his back aches and all that stuff. So, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, I will, I will take a any of, any of those combination, all of them maybe. <laughs> uh, I, I look forward to. I look forward to Spider-Verse opening up. Another thing I really look forward to is that Sony and Marvel are now almost equal partner. I think. I hope Sony could learn something from Marvel. Um, Sony did a fantastic job making that first three Spider-Man movies, so I think they can do it. Uh, the Venom movie, uh, but uh, if uh, they could learn something from Marvel and give that fan service and tell a story too, have some couple good messages, and I think they can do it. I don't like this uh, one company just, uh, it's not a partnership when one company can just say, hey, I don't want this, if, too bad if you don't want it kind of thing. But it looks like uh, they are in equal terms and I think they could be more creative when they work together rather than one try to dominate. So that's that's what I like about that situation. Because this movie basically reset everything so that Sony could go on, on its own way and Marvel could go on its own way. But I hope they choose to work together. So that's, that's my hope. Anyway, that's uh, my whole review. I hope it made any sense. Um, Till next time, I'm in out.